just uh, getting settled, uh, about to have a bite to eat, and um, was chatting with uh, one of my servers and, and asked uh, um, what, what's a good local spirit to have. And uh, without hesitation, uh, he said, oh, you have to have uh, Singani, that's the national drink of uh, Bolivia. So he was nice enough to, uh, to leave the bottle here on my table. Uh, I had to come in a kind of quiet corner to shoot this for you guys, but uh, here you go, this is uh, Singani. Yeah, they made it the national drink about, uh, I think, 10 years ago or something. And uh, um, the president said, hey, you know what, this is our drink and let's be proud of it. So it is a uh, um, uh, grape derivative and, and it uh, uh, started off many, many years ago with uh, uh, bringing some very good grape vines uh, into Bolivia, which uh, do really well at the high uh, altitudes. And then uh, Spanish got involved uh, years later and said, uh, let's kick it up a notch. So rather than just... Uh, um, have a uh, you know uh, light wine at 15 percent let's go for a hard spirit at uh, uh, 40 percent uh, or 80 proof so here we are today this is uh, Singani and uh, let's give it a try that's nice so it is fiery it is uh, again 80 proof or 40 percent so it does have a little bit of burn um, but still very smooth. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of uh, nice grape uh, notes to it. And uh, yeah, he also recommended having it in a cocktail as well. So I just had it uh, straight there, but uh, um, yeah, easily available, really easy to find. Um, Singani, give it a whirl when you're here in Bolivia and uh, hopefully you enjoy it as well. Stay gold. Hey all, sorry to pause the video right here. Just want to ask a little bit of help from, uh, from each and every one of you. So currently, as it stands today, only about 10% of all the people watching these videos are subscribed. So if you could please help out with the uh, uh, magic YouTube algorithms, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell a friend, tell a family member, I can continue to uh, pursue my dream to be the first person with type 1 diabetes to go to every single country in the world. Now, that being said, it's not just for me. I will certainly uh, make sure that I'm giving back the love. Um, so every time my subscriber count uh, doubles, I'm going to give out a prize back. So I gave one out of 500, 1,000, 2,000. Can't wait to give one out of 4,000. Can't wait to give one out of 8,000. And uh, again, it really would help with, again, uh, uh, the support from all of you guys. So please, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the video. Stay golden. I'd say, uh, well done, Bolivia, for putting it in the open here. This is uh, uh, right, right at the airport, um, explaining in uh, good detail as to what uh, compensation you get for how long of a uh, flight delay. I think Canada can uh, learn a thing or two from this. That's uh, thumbs up, uh, Bolivia. That's amazing. That's uh, open and honest and. Uh, um, clear for everybody to see rather than having to fight and uh, be a uh, uh, Karen or Kevin and uh, um, argue and fight for months on end or to get uh, compensated as it is in uh, most cases in Canada unfortunately. Well this one definitely caught my eye. I think we're gonna have to give this one a try here. All right, so I'm at a uh, restaurant called Gusto, and this is um, going to be over the top uh, tasting menu, Bolivian style. So, starting off with a lovely cocktail. This is called a fucking cocktail. So, I don't curse much in general, especially not in the vlog, but uh, that's the name on the menu. So, let's give it a sip. Refreshing, very fresh uh, flavors of lime, uh, rosemary, uh, lemon, mint. Beautiful. All right. So not only is this uh, a delight to your your uh, your taste buds, and, and uh, they try to make it for all your senses. So uh, this is very cute. Um, so it's a one bite. Uh, but beautifully done. Just look at all the detail in there. Little flowers, edible flowers, um, corn, um, and it's uh, yucca and uh, duck ham from what I've been told. So let's give it a bite. Oh my God, there's so many flavors in, in one bite, <clears throat> but 10 out of 10 to start the course. I, I can't wait for the next round. Incredible. Okay, for tasting section number two, 
This is um, uh, onions four ways. So uh, uh, black onion with black onion flowers, um, onion skin, crispy onion skin, and uh, sounds delicious. Let's give it a go. Have a look. Sweet, tasty, uh, incredible. It, um, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful, uh, nice, uh, even simple things like the bread being served on this uh, beautiful rock here. Uh, this bread is a um, potato, uh, purple potato uh, bread, and then just beautifully decorated uh, butter with uh, flowers. At these high-end restaurants, even the little things are done to next level, so I'm already amazed uh, and can't stop smiling and um, enjoying every second of it. Beautiful, nice warm bun. Butter's salty, delicious. It's simple, but uh, done really well. In space, we have alligator. Okay. Uh, we eat the uh, melon and the points, the orange is sriracha. Sriracha is a Almond milk. Okay, gracias. Okay, perfecto. Gracias, gracias. Here we go. Um, some sort of almond milk, alligator soup, I guess. Let's give it a go. Is a great combination so it's um, yeah really nutty with the almonds and almond milk the uh, alligators cut so thin it's uh, um, just just a hint of flavor if you will it's um, I know everybody says it tastes like chicken um, it's like fishy chicken I guess is uh, maybe my, my take on it but uh, uh, and then there's nice little hint of uh, chilies kind of get you on the back uh, back of your throat so it's a beautiful dish Just all the little details here, these little um, uh, sprouts. Um, these are little bits of uh, um, peppers, basically. I, I think like frozen peppers that they've uh, made in the balls and then, um, yeah, they're melting in, in the milk. And then, yeah, nice chunks of uh, almond. There's a big, big piece of alligator right there. Never had alligator before. It's um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's um, it's in that chicken to fish range. Uh, I may not be the best uh, uh, describer of it, but I put it as a combination of both. Okay, so this is uh, okay. Beautiful. So what is the nombre? Pink Bria. Pink uh, Bria. Okay, so it's uh, gin with. Uh, Okay. And a little bit of sparkly uh, bubbles. Thank you. Okay, let's give it a try here. So this is um, another cocktail. Looks lovely. Oh, that's so nice. That's um, that is summer in a glass. So it's uh, a little bit of gin, um, some bubbles, uh, prosecco. Uh, grenadine. 
really nice. The cava pastrami made of watermelon. Yeah. The inside you have the white part from watermelon. You have a pickle cask. You have avocado puree and you have uh, the seeds, the dry seeds, the same watermelon. Okay. You have basil oil, basil leaves, and this one is a frozen or granita from uh, watermelon juice. Wow, okay. So this is like watermelon five ways or six ways. This is uh, unbelievable. Wow. Enjoy. Excellent, gracias. There we go, watermelon five or six ways. That looks unbelievable. Pastrami of watermelon. I've never heard those words come together in my life. And can't wait to dive in. Okay, I love the concept of this dish already, just uh, as, as she was explaining it to me. So let's dive in and give it a go here. A little bit of, try to get a little bit of everything on the spoon. That's where I have so much admiration for chefs that can think of outside the box, think of things that nobody would think of, like watermelon pastrami. That just those words shouldn't go together, but they do, and it does have a meaty type uh, texture and flavor to it. It's unbelievable. That is exceptional so if you're getting anything out of this video come to Bolivia come to Gusto try this watermelon six ways I'm not saying it right but it is uh, a lot of fun and uh, delicious dish Yahua is the typical sauce from Bolivia, it's a spicy sauce. It's made of locoto, locoto is a hot pepper and uh, tomatoes. Okay. And you have a uh, quequinha oil, quequinha is our okay. yeah. For the eat, put uh, the, the, the calque in the inside. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you just dump like this. So let's uh, dive in and see what we got. I guess I'll show you guys the unveiling of this uh, beautiful dish. So as she said, there's a lot going on here. You got these um, tomato leaves, um, fermented tomato, um, sour cream, quite a bit going on in there. So let's dive in we'll try to get a little bit of everything. So it just hits you on the back uh, of, of your throat, um, which is lovely. And uh, let's try one of these uh, dried uh, fermented uh, tomato skins. Just melts in your mouth. It's, uh, it's really, really nice. All right, let's try one more big bite for you guys and then Last one didn't go so good, I was fighting it for a bit. So let's try one more. Such a nice contrast to that last dish of the, uh, the watermelon, which was really sweet. This one's got a lot of acidity, a lot of salt, and a little bit of spice, which is a beautiful balance. I really enjoy this. Okay, so this one is a uh, Amazon fish, um, and I like that they gave me some uh, kind of uh, display things. So this is the scales of the fish, so it just shows you how big it is. Uh, quite big. Okay. These are uh, uh, goji berries. Um, so it's, it's 
cooked in a reduction of uh, goji berries. There's a bunch of these here. These are uh, these have an interesting uh, flavor and um, uh, almost yeah, quite bitter. And then um, yuca. So that's uh, the potato of the Amazon. I've been told. So they made it look like this beautiful dish right here. And let's dive in. Let's try. Uh, Let's try a bit. Okay, so nice meaty fish, um, a really nice flavor. That uh, uh, goji berry uh, uh, sauce here, you can see it's. Uh, Really, really nice. Uh, quite tart and uh, a little bit bitter. And then, um, yeah, there's a little bit of um, citrus in there. Um, some grated up nuts of some sort. I missed uh, that part. Um, but all in all, really nice, uh, really nice dish here. So, Amazon fish. All right, so this is the last of the main courses, and then I think I got one uh, dessert course coming up, but um, here we go. So this is a uh, uh, beautiful pork belly, which is uh, one of my favorites uh, when it's done right. Uh, got some nice bok choy here, and this is uh, pickled uh, pig ear. So again, they're using the whole animal, which I love. Um, and then this is a puree of uh, uh, a few local fruits, and um, let's dive in, give it a go. Beautiful. That, um, that pork is cooked perfectly. This uh, puree of uh, fruits is uh, almost like uh, uh, caramel tasting, which uh, may may sound weird with pork, but it's it's delicious right now. Salty, sweet flavor. to um, try this pickled pig ear with you. Oh, they got really nice hot peppers, almost like uh, pickled hot peppers, Italian style, with that in the, the salad. And um, yeah, it's cut up really thin, and um, it's a little bit chewy, but uh, delicious nonetheless. So. All in all, this meal, um, this whole thing from step one through seven or eight has been uh, phenomenal. I've been uh, enjoying it. Here we go. This is the final course, uh, beautiful dessert. And uh, again, I like that they uh, brought these um, uh, <laughs> visual aids. So this is a uh, tungay, um, so almost like a, uh, a citrus um, type fruit. And uh, that's what the inside looks like. And then this is a uh, hoka, so almost in the zucchini uh, family. Okay, and um, yeah, multiple layers here. So there's a little cake, a uh, little bit of uh, sorbet. And let's dive in, let's give it a go. But yes, I <laughs> really appreciate the visual aids for you guys as well as me. Okay, let's uh, dive in. So there's a nice uh, meringue, meringue on the, the top there with the sorbet. Yeah, very citrusy, <clears throat> very, very citrusy, um, very tart, um, but nice. It's got uh, a little cake here as well. So this cake, this uh, hoka is almost like a squash, it looks like to me. Really bright, vibrant way to um, to close out the meal. Um, very, a um, ton of acidity. Needing a little water there, but um, delicious nonetheless. I'm 
all in all, this uh, entire meal was uh, unbelievable. I highly recommend doing something like this when you when you're here in Bolivia. Um, this recommendation was uh, uh, online as one of the best in uh, um, Bolivia. I'll put their name down below. And uh, yeah, please come here or to another place and um, have the same experience for yourself. You'll uh, you'll thank me later. Beautiful look at uh, downtown La Paz, a nice uh, church there, uh, beautiful houses right up all the way up the hills. And then there's been quite a bit of protesting while I've been here, so that has uh, uh, been happening uh, the last couple nights. So you can see the smoke there, I think I just started filming after the, uh, the last uh, shots went off, but uh, yeah, it's been a nightly occurrence with um, uh, firecrackers essentially going off uh, um, every evening um, protesting uh, uh, the government and uh, I guess housing uh, issues they're having uh, in uh, La Paz especially I'm not sure if it's right across Bolivia but uh, yeah it's a little disconcerting but uh, uh, trying to make the most of it anyways and uh, uh, it's always good to have local knowledge so uh, I'm safe in my hotel here just uh, um, enjoying the views and uh, the very loud uh, sounds. All right, here I am in uh, uh, Bolivian Train Museum. So um, this is near the salt flats, and uh, uh, yeah, basically exactly like they said bunch of old trains left here uh, kind of to rot which is uh, interesting and this is kind of the, the kicking off point for every tour um, prior prior to going to the salt flats <laughs>
Soul. Absolutely stunning. So I'm standing in about um, you know, less than six inches. Uh, just remarkable. Uh, the size is unbelievable. I'll put it up on the screen here. Just how big everything is. We for about half an hour. We're you know, the only ones out here. Uh, feels like our own little piece of uh, heaven. This is absolutely stunning. 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 So glad I'm here right now. This is unbelievable. Walking around in salt flats in the middle of Bolivia. Having a one heck of a day, enjoying every minute of it. Got my poncho on, got my rain boots on. What more is a guy want? very uh, surreal moment as somebody who grew up with winter because every part of me is thinking that I'm walking on ice and being a little extra cautious when I step um, expecting that slide factor which isn't there and it, uh, it very much looks like ice and snow but uh, all salt so beautiful that could be a hockey rink right there but uh, no we are in a uh, I believe the highest desert in the world I will fix that in the, uh, the edits. is a hotel made out of salt so it's almost like uh, being on the beach this whole thing's made out of salt uh, very very neat I don't see a Canadian one there. I think I'll have to uh, mail the one, put it up. So hopefully next time you guys come, there is a beautiful Canadian flag added to the mix.
thanks again for watching another episode of Travel with Carter. I had an amazing time here in uh, Bolivia. I'm just taking off from uh, uh, La Paz Airport and uh, heading to Paraguay for a couple days and then back uh, back home to uh, to work again. But uh, if you guys are enjoying what you're watching, please hit that subscribe button down below. It does a lot of wonders for me in uh, the YouTube uh, algorithm and uh, all the magic behind that scene. So that'd be huge if you could please do that. Tell a friend, tell a family member, and then uh, tune in next Sunday. So I'll have a new episode. Can't tell you where just yet, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can guess it's going to be Paraguay. Okay, stay golden all.